All right, what's going on, YouTube? Uh, we are back with episode two of the review of the Grand Fiesta Americana Coral Beach. And in this episode, we are going to cover uh, restaurants and service. So in the first episode, we covered kind of uh, resort layout, room quality, and then our excursion experience. And then in this one, we're going to cover uh, restaurants and service. So if that's something that you want to hang around for, we'll roll the bumper and we'll be right back. Alright, so get into this right out of the gate. Service, service, service. The service was incredible the entire time. 10 out of 10 for me. There wasn't a single moment where I felt I was annoying someone by asking anything. Um, such as, uh, we had a do not disturb early in the morning, whether we had, you know, we were sleeping in late or whatever that looked like, and then we would have room service come back later when I'd call them. Everything felt super accommodating. Nobody ever seemed annoyed by anything we were asking. Not that we asked anything crazy, but it was nice to feel like, you know, like all of your questions and answered were, you know, were, weren't an issue or a problem. So uh, service was impeccable at this at this resort. Really, really liked it. Second thing I want to talk about is tipping. So obviously it's an all-inclusive. Tipping is not mandatory. I would say that's probably good practice. Um, I took all small bills uh, in U.S. dollars. I tipped all in U.S. dollars as well. So I took, you know, ones, fives, tens, and twenties. And then based on what the situation was or what, if we were at dinner versus, you know, lunch by the pool or whatever that looked like, just realize if you take a, a decent, uh, decent amount of small bills that it'll, it'll get you through. We went for eight days, seven nights. So, um, it got us through that. Uh, once again, with the tipping, the other thing is it never felt expected. You know, when you go to some resorts and they kind of hang around waiting for the tip that I never had that experience which was really great, which made me want to even tip even more. I was usually running down the people to give them the money as I'm fumbling through my bag or whatever to get to get whatever bills I wanted to get out. So realize that um, you also, I'm not going to say it gets you better service, but uh, they're usually more focused on you if you're you know a decent tipper. And we'll get into more of that once we get farther down the list. Um, reservations. Reservations are absolutely key if you want to hit most or all of the restaurants. If you're staying long enough that you can hit all the restaurants, then you know some of them are gonna require reservations, some of them are not. The restaurants that do not require a reservation are Coral Cafe, Vina Del Mar, Tuscany Terrace, and then obviously room service would not need a reservation. Um, we had one person in our party of 14 that did all the reservations leading up to, and I believe she told me you can do them up to a week prior that uh, she took care of all the reservations on each of the days and then kind of mapped it out for everybody and then we knew where we were all going and at what time so that worked out really really well. Um, realize as well that at all the restaurants that we'll be reviewing if you have a larger party I would say probably more than like six or seven people you may not be sitting at the same table so we only had I believe one restaurant where we all got to sit together um, because obviously we were a pretty massive party so if you're going with a large family or whatever it looks like friends um, you may not always be sitting together. All right, first restaurant I want to cover is the Vina Del Mar. So um, no reservation required. Um, this is dress code, I would say casual, kind of saw all kinds of things rolling in there. It's more of a buffet setup. Um, they do change what the buffet food is throughout the week. Um, it does breakfast and dinner. I don't think it does lunch, but I'm not 100% positive there. So uh, make sure you check with them if you're gonna end up going. Um, and then, um, if you do hit it during like peak breakfast or peak dinner times, you, there will be a little bit of a line there as they're kind of rolling people through and getting them sat down. So just realize that, but I did go for breakfast. Uh, the breakfast to me was a set of seven out of 10. There was lots of choices. The food was, was good. The service was good. Uh, they kind of set you, they'd ask you what drinks they bring your drinks and then you kind of go get your food as you want and for how long as you want. Um, I give it a seven because it was a bit loud. I realized the buffet style, so usually it's families, there's lots of plates and utensils and people. It's a big, big, beautiful open room. Um, so, you know, you had some of that, you had some of that echoing and things like that going on in the room as well. So a little bit louder, but you know, that's, that's minimal. That's minor to me. Uh, next, I want to talk about Tuscany Terrace. So Tuscany Terrace, also no reservation. We actually did have a reservation, so you can make a reservation there if you want to, but you don't need one. Uh, dress code to me was also casual. Uh, I saw kind of a, a wide array. I was wearing, I believe, like a, like a polo and shorts uh, to that. It's more of Italian food. Uh, dinner only. 
It's kind of a small room, two large doors open up. It has an awning. Uh, some of the tables spill out into the hallway, which is like uh, off the lobby. And they have like a terrace or, you know, like a fence that wraps around the table. So the people know that, like, where to walk and where not to walk. You don't have people walking through your tables. They block it off with like plants and stuff. So um, realize that they, have a, uh, 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 they had a man playing a violin as well while you were there, which was, which was cool to add to the whole experience. And to me, the food rating was a 7 out of 10 here as well. It wasn't terrible. Uh, it wasn't amazing. It was somewhere, you know, in between. And the whole experience was fine. It was a decent uh, selection on the menu as well for Italian food. Next is La Jolla. Uh, reservations are required here. Uh, dress code, I would say, is like upscale casual. I had shorts and like a button down. Uh, it's mostly Mexican food. I believe it's dinner only. Um, it's a big room, uh, stained glass. Uh, dim lightings, you know, it's a nice mood set. Uh, they did have a mariachi band that was uh, coming up to perform as we were actually walking out. Uh, pro tip for this restaurant, just a heads up if you're ordering a mixed drink, they brought our mixed drinks out with a chili salt rim. Um, so if you're expecting sugar, you're going to have to ask for sugar because uh, ours came out with chili salt and I wasn't a fan. Um, but just realize that, you know, that's obviously uh, part of that theme and probably part of the Mexican culture to be able to do that. So um, if you're not wanting that and you're wanting sugar or just salt, and, you know, in general, you're going to you have to make that uh, clarification. I had the steak. It was excellent. Uh, the whole meal was very, very good. And the food rating for me was, you know, seven or eight out of ten uh, for this restaurant. Next is uh, Le Basilac. So we talked about this restaurant a bit in episode one. This is the one where you actually have to pay extra. It's not included. Um, so reservation, obviously, absolutely uh, required. Uh, pretty, it's going to be the, a strict dress code. So um, I saw I was wearing like chinos and a button down, short sleeve button down. The people in front of us going in were in full suits with blazers. So, you know, realize that like the low end was probably me <laughs> and the high end, you know, and all the women are in dresses and things like that. So it's going to be it's going to be a more upscale from a dress code perspective. Uh, dinner only. It's an additional fifty dollars per person. If you're staying at the hotel, I believe it's 150 if you are not, because people do come in to go to the restaurant, from what I was told. Um, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday only. Um, it's a AAA Five Diamond Award, and you cannot change your reservation within 24 hours because they're already prepping the food uh, for what menu they're going to have. You, uh, you obviously don't get to choose what you eat. All of that is laid out for you, and then you just go through the courses. There's six courses. It's adults only. There's wine pairings uh, throughout the meal as well. So if you're if you're into wine and wine tastings with food and all that, then you're gonna love this experience. I'm not a big wine person, but the people who were with me who uh, drank the wine, they they enjoyed it. Um, experience ten out of ten for me. I thought it was it was well worth the fifty dollars per person. The food was amazing. Uh, the, the drinks, from what I heard, were amazing, um, and the experience was great. They had ballerina. They had a male and female ballerina going through and dancing while while you were eating your food. So that just added something else to the whole experience as well. So it was worth it for me. Once again, you can probably hear my dog making noises. So just realize that's a Bernie's Mountain Dog. Uh, Isla Cantoy is the next one we're going to discuss. Reservation required for dinner. Uh, dress code f casual for breakfast. And then uh, probably casual for lunch. I didn't actually eat lunch there, but you can. And then for dinner, I think it's like upscale casual. I saw I didn't get to eat dinner there either because uh, it was the one night of our excursion we got back too late and it seemed like more of upscale lots of dresses and button downs and things like that uh, breakfast lunch and dinner like i said dinner is described on the the kind of flyer menu as seafood al fresco uh, it's outdoor dining so the restaurant is outdoor no walls open so you get lots of ocean air you're right next to the beach which is really cool it was my favorite breakfast spot um, once I found out about it, which was I was told by somebody who worked there because we were waiting in line to get into the inside buffet and they were like hey you know, you can go outside, there's nobody out there, so we went out there. We ate breakfast by the water, by the ocean, every morning after that. It was it was incredible. Um, it almost has all the same food as well. It's missing a few things, but um, nothing crazy. Uh, less crowded, uh, obviously not as noisy because it's open air, and you get the breeze, and you can eat by the water. I loved it. Um, convenient for lunch as well because it's right by the pool, so if the ocean is to your back, it's right next to the farthest left pool. It's between the farthest left pool and the middle pool, so... Uh, it's, it's in a really good location as well if you want to sit down and eat lunch. And the breakfast experience for me, because it's the only thing I ate there, was a 9 out of 10. I loved it. Uh, Grand Coral, which is on the fourth floor, this is the big open room, which is like a, a show and a dinner together. So 
you need a reservation for this, dress code um, is casual to me because I saw everything from like swim trunks and a t-shirt to like, I was in like, I think a button down and shorts. So I realized that it was all, and there's people like way more dressed up than that as well. Um, so realize that. Um, the food options, I believe, change uh, throughout the nights. Um, when we were there, we had like a chicken and a broccoli soup and things like that. There's a four course meal, including dessert, uh, starts at 7.30 p.m. And it has the shows are like magic circus. There's a fire show. We went to the circus show. Uh, it was okay. So the entertainment for the show portion was some parts were cool. Some parts weren't that great. Um, the band that plays before the circus goes on. So it'd be kind of while you're eating like your appetizer bread soups is really loud, like loud enough that you can't talk to the people at your same table. So realize that when you're there. And you're in the appetizers, like the band plays great music, great band, but they were just super, super loud. And I'm sure the room didn't help because acoustically it was probably, um, it was made for that kind of, uh, situation. Uh, Havana club. So we went to this restaurant the last night we were there. Um, reservation is required. Dress code I'd say was upscale casual as well. Um, I believe it's dinner only. It's Argentinian style food, um, as well. It said a lot of, uh, kind of the background of the food on the menu. There are a pair of dancers that dance throughout like your, your dinner experience. So um, they'll come out, they'll do a style of dance and have a wardrobe that kind of matches that style. And then they'll go, the wardrobe change, they'll come back out for the next style and do the next dance. So that was really cool. That was a, a, a nice added touch. Uh, the space does turn into the nightclub uh, later in the evening. So if you're looking to, you know, get your groove on later at night, then this is the place you want to go. Uh, to me, the experience was like a 6 out of 10. Um, the one thing I liked is they sat all 14 of us together, which I kind of talked about earlier that not all restaurants do that. They did that at the Havana Club, so that was excellent. Uh, the dancers were a great touch. It was, you know, a nice breakup while you're waiting for your food. Uh, but to me, the food really wasn't that great. I had steak there as well. I'm not a big steak person either. I know I've had steak twice on this uh, on this vacation, but I'm usually not a big steak person. Um, the steak at La Jolla was amazing. The steak at the Havana Club was chewy. Um, so I asked for, I think, medium, and it was, you know, still pretty chewy. So, And the menu didn't have any options, so heads up there. Not a whole lot of options to choose from. Uh, next, we're moving on to the Coral Cafe. Um, this is great for coffees, pastries. Um, my wife got an iced latte pretty much from here or from room service every morning, and they were, she said they were great. I'm not a coffee drinker. Um, they had small breakfast offering too. I think they had like eggs, potatoes, and like some choice of meat as well. If you don't want to have a real, if you want to like a quick, a quick meal, this would be the place to go. They have snacks and ice cream as well in the evening. They have different cakes um, that you can get throughout the day. Like and they get carrot cake and brownies and um, uh, cheesecake, things like that. Um, they do have lunch sandwiches as well, which they have them like pre-made and then they like put them in like a panini press. Um, I got the portobello mushroom with like, it was like in like a, a wheat kind of roll. It was really, really good. Um, wasn't bad at all. I give the lunch like a seven out of 10 and the snacks were like an eight out of 10. Cause they had like these chests of snacks that you can just go in and grab and take back to your room and then just keep refilling them. So that was really cool. Um, it's great for the kids too. If you just want to grab some snacks. Um, so a couple of things that I didn't do, uh, the spa dinner. So I'm just going to give you, you know, some information about it. Reservation required. It's additional charge as well. So heads up there. It's Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. It's one and a half hours of hydrotherapy. So kind of like their pool experience. And then 15 minute, 15 minute reflexology, uh, massage. And then you get a four course meal after that. Um, you're dining in bathrobes. That's also kind of sounds kind of cool. Uh, I didn't do this, so I can't give it a rating. I just saw it on the pamphlet. Another one I saw in the pamphlet was the beach cabana, uh, cabana dinner. Uh, reservation required, additional charge as well for this. Uh, it's Monday through Sunday, so it's every day of the week. Uh, it's a four course gourmet menu, has wine pairings as well. Uh, you have a private cabana, uh, which is set up on the beach, which I can, I can show a picture of that as well. And then if it rains, they have a special backup location on the resort. So heads up there, even if it rains, they will take care of you. And I also didn't do this, so I don't have a rating for this. Um, what I did do lunch, uh, or I didn't do this either. So lunch buffet by the pool. So, um, they have a setup that they put together kind of late morning and then they get all set up for midday and they have like a, uh, two tents together, like pop-up tents. And then they have a nice like buffet style. I think it was more like, you know, tacos, fajitas, things like that. 
Um, it's really, it's right next to the middle pool. Um, you can kind of just fly by, they, they make a plate for you and then you can just take it back and, and eat by the pool on your, on your pool chair, whatever that looks like. It's easy access. I didn't actually eat the food. I just smelled it every day and it smelled amazing. Um, but I don't have a rating for that either. What I did do though is the poolside service. Um, so this is drinks or food. Um, it's obviously in a time frame as well. So you can't just, you know, get it at like 9am and ask them to bring you breakfast. Um, uh, that, that didn't, that's not an option. At least I didn't think it was an option. I didn't ask. And I don't think the servers were going around that early. Um, this was the great way to go. So the service was quick as well. So even when you ordered lunch, um, it was probably 20 to 30 minutes and then it was out and it was kind of on your beach chair waiting for you. And the amazing thing is like the order was never wrong. They always knew who it was going to, um, what you asked for, what you didn't want on something like that was always right. It, it was just, it was incredible. Back to the service and accommodations, like just 10 out of 10 for the whole experience. Um, they, um, we tried the quesadillas and then the fish sandwich as well. They were both really good. They were amazing. And they give you like all the fixing, like the dipping sauces, ketchup. They have like a closed plastic thing you open up with forks and, and all the condiments. And then they give you little dishes for all the different dipping sauces or sour creams or whatever that looks like. So don't think you're just getting the meal. Like they give you all the, uh, the, uh, the extras as well. So a couple pro tips for the poolside service. Um, tip well at the beginning of the day and they will take care of you through that day. Um, so anywhere from, you know, five, 10, 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks. And then it's not so much that the service changes dramatically, but it, they're keeping a very close eye. Like you're not ever like looking cause they're coming before you need something. And then if you don't, not saying that it's awful, it just changes slightly. So if you care that much, just a heads up, like if you never want to go wanting for the, for the day or for the week, like, you know, throw a couple bucks for the service and it, it certainly goes a long way. And if you plan on, so another tip to this, if you plan on staying, if you find a pool that you love and you plan on staying in that area, you can continually get the same server. Like you can kind of compound that tip, right? So you can, you can kind of feed off of, or you can add, you know, throughout the days and throughout the week and get a real great experience and a great relationship with this, with the server or the service in that area. Um, it could make for, so we, we jumped around a lot. So I didn't, I didn't get to nail that down, but I was thinking about that because our server on the first or second day was really awesome. And I wish we would have been able to use him again. I think it was actually the first day we were at the pool. Um, but we didn't get back to him, um, because we kind of jumped around a bunch, but, um, so that is all the services and all the restaurant options, uh, at the grand Fiesta Americana Coral Beach. Um, if I missed anything, I apologize. I tried to go through the whole pamphlet and this is really from my experience as well. There's going to be different things or things that I may have screwed up or miss. If you have any questions about any of the restaurants or anything, just leave them in the comments uh, and I will answer them to the best of my knowledge. Um, like I said, uh, trip details, we were there between July 2nd and July 10th. We just got back. Um, so that time frame. well, our next video for this uh, review is going to be video three. And that is going to be wrapped around the pools and the beach area. We're going to be covering kind of all the aspects of that with obviously lots of uh, videos that come in to show you kind of what it looks like. So we will catch you on video three. All right, thanks.